So today we're going to be installing this shiplap on an accent wall, but it's going to be a little bit different because instead of installing it the typical horizontal way, we're actually going to install these boards vertically. And it's also a little bit different because I have different sizes of shiplap here. I got this stack of 1x8s, which are actually 6.5 on the face, and then a bunch of 1x6s over here that are 4.5 on the face. But I need to make some 1x4 shiplaps, and they don't sell those where I bought these so I'm going to have to make them on my own and what I'm going to do is just cut some of these one by sixes and then make the face of them three and a half. You'll see here in a minute um, but I brought the big router table today so I could do that and then I brought my big job site table saw. It's buried under there. So this is not ideal. I know I just made that video about working out of the truck. This is not, I usually do not have that router table and I usually do not have this large table saw here. But since I knew I was gonna be making these boards, I just like the way this table saw cuts so much more than that small compact one down there. That one I use just for like ripping a casing or something that needs to be a little trimmed on the side. So this table saw is way better. But anyways, after we install those boards vertically, we're going to put some trim around it. You'll see it actually is a pretty cool design. We've never done it before. This is a big chunk of extruded aluminum. I would really like to get a trailer one day so I can just carry all this stuff with me. I love having these tools with me. They just feel more powerful. I don't know what it is, but that can obviously pull a trailer, no problem. And I've looked at some prices, get a, like a 16 foot trailer or a 12 foot trailer. Uh, really nicely built for like five to ten thousand, which I think is a great deal. But I can't do that because I have an HOA and they say no trailers, so I got to move eventually. Let me show you this wall. Got the floor prepped right here, protected, and this is the dining room and this is the wall right here. So we're going to be running the boards along this wall. First things first, we're going to get our snap line out. I rarely start an accent wall without a snap line just so I can see it and get an approval before we start. And then once we get that, we will get to work. We need to see, we're gonna put a one by six here. Mm -hmm. So we need to see like where that's gonna end and that board will start, you know? So we've got the center of this wall found, it's this circled line right here. And since we're gonna be putting a one by six down the middle, we'll split on two and three quarters. So then we'll shoot the laser on this line and this line. We'll snap a line there so we know where that's gonna be. And then we got 132 and a half for our vertical measurement of the entire room. And we're also gonna put a rail going through this style uh, midway. So that would be 66 and a quarter. And then if we check it from the floor, we should be right at 66 and a quarter. So they are perfect there. And we're also going to split a one by six on that. So I'll hold my tape at two and three quarters, mark here, and then mark five and a half. So we'll snap that horizontal line, that horizontal line, and these two. And drop it down a little bit. So I have my laser right there on my line. Remember, this is the middle of the room here, but we're putting that one by six, so we'll snap on either side of that. All right, quick change of plans here, guys. We have our one by six in the middle. We're also gonna have a one by four on each side of that. That's the, that's the update that we made. So now that we have that, now we're gonna get some samples of our shiplap. We're gonna make that um, one by four shiplap on the table saw and the router, and then we'll come in and figure out the pattern. I really should invest in that bent wrench. So I could do this from the top.
and we'll find the best insert. Oh, that's perfect. And we'll need to drop this thing down quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's full of dust. So now we'll figure out how we need to cut this piece down to arrive at a two and a half inch face. So since this board is five and a quarter and it has a four and a half inch face, if we want a two and a half inch face, I guess we'd make our board three and a quarter. the right idea here this is gonna work so you can see this is our standard board that comes from the lumber yard and then the one we just made but you can see the obvious problem here we're gonna to have to prime all this and definitely sand it a little bit so what we're gonna do we're gonna move the fence closer and then cut off this side because this is a three-quarter inch depth cut into the board and this one is a 5 8 depth cut into the board when you're looking at it this way so we're just gonna bring that bit, we're gonna bring the fence up to that point. You can see there's a gap there. And we'll scoot it that way. That way, the part that we cut off will be like this. It'll be hidden and we won't have to prime or anything. Now this completes our random boards. So we got our six and a half inch face, four and a half inch face, and our two and a half inch face. Here's a look at the board we milled, and you can see when it comes together, it's offset. This is the 5 eighths depth cut. This is the three quarter one that I originally tried to cut. And then you can see the spacing there is good to go. Okay, so we just figured the layout for this side of the wall. This is split right down the middle. Whatever we do here, we're gonna do over there in the opposite way. So I got three pieces here. I have a small, a medium, and then a large. So we're gonna try to put these in a random order, which we did, just did. We have a medium, a large, a small, a large, a medium, a large, a small. You, you can't really see it probably on the camera, but we laid all this out to a randomized order, I guess. So if we have a medium, a large, and a small this way, going to the right, we're gonna have a medium, a large, and a small going that way. So it'll, basically it'll be like a reflection, in these two sections of paneling. So we're not gonna chalk line all these out because that's just ridiculous. We're just gonna start installing it and we'll probably just get the laser on the first one so we know it's plumb and then we'll just start stacking them up after that. So this should, this should actually go pretty quick. We have one outlet we'll have to cut out for, but that's no big deal. So after figuring out the method to our madness here, we're gonna have three of these custom pieces on this side and three of them on that side. So now we need to go out and cut these down. We need to make six of them. And then once we get those made, we can cut all of our pieces and we can just start stacking them. Get the first one plumb and just go to town on these things. That's not good. Just, I guess I just ripped this stuff into a strip because it was pretty close to the end of the board there. I'll just clamp that to there and hit it with the 220. And what I'm about to show you right here actually works really good on MDF end grain. So when you cut an MDF board and, you, and it's all raw and weird, um, 
it likes to drink primer and paint, pigmented shellac primer. This stuff has really great coverage where the wood or MDF, whatever it is, won't really absorb it. And this stuff smells horrible, but it works really good. I can return this too. I'll tell them they're a little short. <laughs> so now we have all of our boards cut right here and all the quantities that we need. Well, you said you could do it. If you didn't think you could do it, why didn't you tell me? I wouldn't have sent you. She's saying that. Just cock it. Cock it and get out of there. I'm just gonna put a good amount of adhesive on the back of these boards and shoot them with some nails. So for our first board, we're just gonna put it in place and we're, we're gonna push on it obviously, but we just wanna make sure we got the edge of it right on that plumb line there. This adhesive works really good. Some people ask if it, since this is painted, is it gonna adhere? It, it'll actually adhere so well that if you were to try to rip this off, it would rip the paper of the drywall off. So I, I really trust this adhesive right here. And the ones we can hit with studs, we will. Okay, and you can see we're right on our plumb line all the way down. And what I like to do with this laser line is I like to see half of it on the board and then half of it on the wall. So I split the line because it, it can be a little deceiving because the line is so thick, but that's how I like to do it. So this one's good to go. John's gonna be the adhesive guy and he can see what board I need next because we labeled them on the wall. He's just gonna start putting adhesive and I'm gonna grab them from him and we're gonna get a little system going here. So there we go, we got one side of this room done and it's kind of funny, you can see the different color primers that they use on the one by sixes and the one by eights. And you can see this random pattern, but where the method to the madness part comes in is we're gonna take this whole section and just mirror it over there on the other side. So we're gonna get started on that now. like the way this thing looks so far and I'm gonna like it even more when we put these styles and rails on it.